Today on Ridge Roamer, a completely objective comparison between the new Indian Pursuit and Harley Davidson's Road Glide Limited. I'm gonna go ahead and start with the price so that as we get through all the differences, you can evaluate whether the price differences, as small as they are, are worth it or not to you. So looking at the Indian Pursuit, it starts at $29,999, where the Road Glide Limited starts at $28,749. So immediately you've got a little bit of an advantage there on the Harley side. However, if you go with the blacked out version, you know, the starting price is going to be your gloss black paint with the chrome finishes. If you prefer that blacked out look, uh, the Indian Pursuit starts at $30,999, where the Road Glide Limited is going to be at $30,749. So you've got a much smaller discrepancy there already. And then based on paint, uh, the maximum price of the Pursuit is $32,499, where the Road Glide Limited is going to max out at $31,874. Now, to be clear, I am looking at the base Pursuit, not the Premium Edition, and I'm looking at the Road Glide Limited, not the CVO version. So all these prices can go up a little bit if you go to the more premium. This is looking at the standard basic model from each manufacturer. Now next, it's 2022, so everything has a surcharge, including manufacturers of motorcycles. Indian's manufacturer surcharge is $900, where Harley-Davidson's is at $1,000. So again, that's going to decrease the discrepancy in price between the two of them just a little bit more. Next, we'll take a look at the engines. Indian is running a 108 cubic inch liquid-cooled engine that makes 122 horsepower and 128 pound-foot of torque in stock form before you do any modifications. The Harley-Davidson Road Glide Limited comes with a 114 cubic inch engine making an estimated 100 horsepower. They don't actually list um, what their crank horsepower is, but that's the estimated numbers that I was able to find. Uh, and 122 pound-foot of torque and for cooling, they're not, this is not an air-cooled bike. It's not a fully liquid-cooled bike. It's what they call twin-cooled. Basically, the twin-cooled means that there is some liquid cooling, but it's only at uh, the heads. And then they also rely on the air cooling. Looking at the drivetrain, they both run a six-speed transmission. The Indian uses a gear-driven primary, where the Harley is using a chain. They both have a belt final drive. And then one of the big differences here is in the oil cavities. The Indian Pursuit has what they call a single sump oil system. And this is the same as Honda and Yamaha and everybody else uses, where Harley's still using uh, the three separate oil cavities. So when you do go to change your oil, you've got to change your engine oil, your transmission oil, and your primary oil. Looking at some of the dimensions, the Indian Pursuit Weighs completely ready to run, that's full tank of gas and everything, 912 pounds, where the Road Glide Limited is at 932. They both hold six gallons of fuel, and then the storage capacity, when you start looking at the saddlebags and the trunk combined, the Indian is at 35.8, where the Harley is at 35.1 gallons. Seat height, Indian advertises a 26.5 inch seat height, and the Harley is shown at 27.2 inches, but they do specify that that's the seat height once the motorcycle is laden with a 180 pound rider. So a little bit different uh, in the way they measure things, but the Indian does have the advantage with that lower seat height. Continuing on with some other dimensions, the wheelbase of the Indian Pursuit is at 65.7, where the Harley is at 64 inches. Uh, the longer wheelbase is going to give you a little bit better ride, but the shorter wheelbase is going to help you as far as doing U-turns and some of your tighter maneuvers. Ground clearance, Indian has got 5.4 inches of ground clearance, and the Harley is at 5.1. Lean angle, 31 degrees out of the Indian Pursuit where the Harley is able to maintain a 32 degree angle 
So they've got the advantage on that one. Looking at the rake, 25 degrees on the Indian forks and 26 degrees on the Harley forks. Shorter rake is gonna give you a little bit more nimble feel. Longer rake is gonna give you a little bit better stability on the straightaways. Continuing on to the suspension, the Indian Pursuit uses a 43 millimeter inverted front fork with 5.1 inches of travel, where the Harley Davidson is using a standard front fork setup, but they're a 49 millimeter with 4.6 inches of front travel. On the rear, Indian uses a Fox single shock that's hydraulically adjustable and the Harley's using dual shocks, they call them dual premium shocks that are manually adjustable. Rear travel, four and a half inches for the Indian and three inches for the Harley. Now looking at the brakes, the Indian Pursuit is using Brembo radially mounted dual front calipers that are four piston each. The Harley is using their standard uh, Harley Davidson. Uh, they're also dual caliper. Uh, four piston as well. And then in the rear, Indian continuing using the Brembo brakes, but they're a single disc and they're only two piston, where the Harley is using, again, their Harley Davidson brakes, a uh, single rotor in the back as well, but they are a four piston caliper. Wheels and tires, Indian Pursuit uses a 19 inch front and 16 inch rear wrapped in Metzler Cruise Tech tires where the Harley Road Glide is using 18 inch wheels front and rear, and they're continuing on with their relationship with Dunlop with the exclusive HD series tires on their bike. Both motorcycles are equipped with nice stereos. The Indian Pursuit uses a seven inch touchscreen, four speakers that are 50 watts each for a total of 200 watt power. Uh, the Harley Davidson uses a six and a half inch touchscreen, four speakers that are 25 watts each for a total of 100 watt. Now, of course, both manufacturers have upgraded stereo options it's about the sky is a limit. Uh, you can modify these and put some incredible stereos on both if you're willing to sink the money into it. Some of the electronics features, the Indian Pursuit does have standard tire pressure monitoring system, or on the Harley, that's an optional upgrade. The Indian comes with three ride modes, uh, rain, road, and sport, so you can change how the ride-by-wire throttle uh, is translated to the rear tire. The Harley-Davidson does not have any ride modes. They're both equipped with GPS. The Indian comes with one year of free live traffic and weather, and then they have a subscription service for that if you want to continue on the Harley live traffic and weather is not an option at this time. Looking at some of the other miscellaneous features, they both come with heated grips. They both have LED headlights. Not all of the other lights are LED on the Harley Davidson, where Indian uses 100% LEDs uh, across the board, front to rear on their bike. They both have vents in the fairing. Uh, the Indian does have a door that you can reach up there and open and close. So if it's cold and you want to block that off, you can. The Harley has the vents, but they always stay open. More features, looking at the windshields. The Indian has their power adjustable windshield that they've done on all of their fairing bikes, where Harley is still using a fixed windshield. I'm not sure why Harley hasn't gone to a power windshield with all the touring bikes they do. Um, but that is definitely going to be a bit of a difference there where you can get that windshield set exactly for the conditions and your height on the Indian or on the Harley, you know, you're going to have to kind of switch them out depending on your, uh, on your preferences, but you don't have the capability to change that on the fly. The Indian also comes with power locks for the saddlebags and trunk. The Road Glide Limited does not. The Indian has quick release trunk already as a standard option on the harley davidson you do have to buy an additional kit if you want to make your trunk quick release the indian also has a light in the trunk that illuminates down over your belongings makes it a little bit easier to find things in the dark on the road glide limited it is not equipped with that so that was some of the very by the numbers objective things 
uh, as you relate the Indian and the Harley on their you know, fixed fairing, full touring motorcycles. But there's always more to the story. So when you're out shopping, you're gonna have to look at some of the things that are more subjective. It can be a little hard to test ride everything these days just because inventory is limited, but definitely take a look at both of these bikes hard. They're both incredible bikes. Take a look at some of the other things that are a bit more subjective, like roominess, you know, which bike fits you best, feels like you're stretched out, um, or you know, whatever works best for you. How smooth is it? Both under power, once you know, if you're running 80 mile an hour down the interstate or you're sitting at a stoplight, you got to understand which one is going to be smoother, which one you prefer. Again, heat generation is another subjective one. Uh, I've had a lot of people tell me that heat generation is not subjective. I can tell you it is because I've had multiple people get off of the same bike. And one will tell you it's amazing, it's the coolest running bike they've ever been on, and the guy that rode it before said it was miserable and it was hot. It is a subjective thing. Everybody views heat a little bit different as far as where it hits them, how they're riding, that type of stuff. Also, seat comfort, we're not all shaped the same. We're not the same weight, we're not the same thickness, we're not the same size. So seat comfort, again, very subjective. Other things to look at, fit and finish of the motorcycle, paint quality, what color options are available that you prefer, uh, how's the wind protection for you if you're 5'5 or you're 6'5, that's going to be very different. Um, so take a look at how the buffeting is and what options there are for wind protection for you. And then storage accessibility. Sometimes a motorcycle has a lot of storage, but if it's not easy to access or you don't like the way the latches go or, or something like that, then you're just going to be frustrated. So take a look at the accessibility there. There are many other subjective features when it comes to um, picking out a motorcycle, but these are some of the ones that I pulled out. I hope this information in this format was helpful for you uh, as you research which uh, touring bike might be best for you. If you enjoyed it, please hit the like button. I appreciate you joining me and I hope you all have a great day.